All right, to introduce coordination chemistry here, I've got to talk about a new type of bonding. So in the past, I gave you a cation and an anion and said, come up with the formula for the compound they might form. So in this case, with Fe2 plus and F minus, you'd come up with FeF2. That way the overall charge comes out to zero. So, but now we've got a new type of bonding going on. It turns out you might actually have covalent bonding that can occur between the metal ion, so as well as between the fluoride ions. So it turns out the fluoride ions here are going to provide all the electrons to make these lovely bonds. So in this case, they'd be acting as what we call a ligand. So, and these ligands are Lewis bases. So they're supplying the electrons to make these covalent bond. And so the key hallmark here to be a base, you simply have to have a non-bonding pair of electrons and fluoride definitely does. So then you also have a central metal ion. So and in this case, he's acting as the Lewis acid, the electron pair acceptor. Uh, in this case, you're always going to have one central metal ion surrounded by a variable number of ligands. So and we see that we can define what's called a coordination number. So in this coordination number just defines you know, how many bonds are being made to that central metal ion. So and based on knowing how many bonds are being made, we can figure out if it's a linear complex or a tetrahedral, square planar, octahedral. In this case, with six bonds being made to the iron ion, this would be an example of what we call an octahedral complex. So don't worry about these hybridizations for now. We'll kind of talk about those a little bit later. So it turns out that if to be a Lewis base here, a ligand, all you need is a non-bonding pair of electrons, then technically you don't even necessarily have to have a negative charge. And so in this case, uh, this, second, this example I just pulled in, uh, we've got iron still as a central metal ion, but in this case I've got ammonia acting as the ligands. So there's still six of them, so we still got a coordination number of six, and that would still correspond to an octahedral complex. So, but in this case, things are making bonds to the metals that normally we wouldn't have considered uh, when talking about traditional ionic bonding. And so things like ammonia and water can get involved and act as ligands in these, coordinate, uh, in these coordination compounds. Uh, in this case, uh, we've got to define what's called the coordination sphere here. So in your coordination sphere includes the central metal ion and all the ligands that are bonded to it. And they are not free to participate in normal aqueous reactions uh, in an aqueous solution. However, the counter ions here like chloride are free to participate in normal aqueous reactions. So and we'll see that in the next question. All right, so the question on your handout reads here, if excess silver nitrate is reacted with one mole so of this lovely coordination compound, the question is how many moles of AgCl will be produced? So the reaction of interest here is Ag plus reacting with Cl minus to form insoluble AgCl. So and the key is that these two chlorides that are just counter ions are free to react, but this guy here inside the coordination sphere is acting as a ligand. He's not free to undergo this kind of aqueous reaction. And so in this case, if we've got excess silver nitrate with only one mole of this compound, well, this one mole of this lovely coordination compound contains two moles of chloride ions. So we should be able to produce two moles of AgCl when react with uh, excess silver nitrate. All right, next on the docket here, we've got to talk about what are termed polydentate ligands here. And dentate here from the same word as dental kind of means many toothed ligands. And these are simply ligands that can make more than one bond to the central metal ion. And so the main requirement here is then you've got to have two different atoms that each have a non-bonding pair of electrons. And they gotta be separated far enough that they can actually bond in diff two different positions to that central metal ion. So here's a couple of them. The one on the left here is ethylene diamine. The one on the right here is called orthophenanthrolene. Uh, and on the next page, I give you a whole host, a uh, big fat table of a bunch of ligands, uh, including mostly monodentates, but a handful of polydentate ligands as well. So in some form, more than even two bonds. We've got a, a tridentate and a hexadentate on that list. So in this lovely complex ion we've got shown below here, we've got three ethylene diamines, and they make two bonds each. And so you got to know these bidentate ligands and some of the other polydentates know how many bonds they make because I might ask you the coordination number of a compound like this. And again, the coordination number is not the number of ligands, but the number of bonds being made to the metal ion. And so in this case, even though, even though we've only got three ligands, so they each make two bonds. And so we got a grand total of six bonds being made to the central metal ion. So it's an octahedral complex. The coordination number is six.